Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE PE lesson. In this video, we'll break down and simplify 14 recent past exam questions on Chapter 10, Social, Cultural and Ethical Influences. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing to the channel, give the video a thumbs up and visit my channel page for short summary videos and my resource store by clicking the link in the description for complete revision and teaching materials. Let's begin. Question number one is on topic 10.2. And as always, you can head down to the description of this video and find links to the short summary videos containing literally everything you need to know on chapter 10. So if you don't understand a question, go and watch the relevant video, then come back and attempt it. Describe four factors that have contributed to the growth in leisure activities. So the leisure industry has grown enormously in recent years, and there are a number of factors that have contributed to this growth, and you need to name and describe four of them. Okay, so improved health awareness is the first that I've gone for. People are generally more aware of the importance of exercise for maintaining health, encouraging more people to participate. So as our awareness of the importance of exercise for maintaining health has gone up, more people are getting involved for that reason. Number two, reduced equipment costs. So advances in technology and mass production mean that sports equipment is more accessible or cheaper to a greater number of people. Number three, improvements in travel methods, so better public transport and car ownership means more people can reach facilities. So previously, when fewer people owned cars and public transport wasn't quite as good, um, not so many people were able to access facilities that were far away from their homes. And then finally, advances in technology. So home technologies such as washing machines and dishwashers free up time that can be spent on leisure activities. So these are my four points that I've described, and uh, we'll just have a look at the mark scheme here and have a look at um, some alternative points that we could have gone for. So improvements in healthcare was another one. So people generally have better access to medical care these days, um, and people live longer as well, which means they can participate for longer. Better health awareness, we mentioned, more leisure facilities uh, as well, so governments and local authorities and uh, also private providers uh, recognize the increased demand, so provide extra facilities. This is why there are so many gyms in uh, towns now. And uh, finally, we have uh, wider media coverage as well, which inspires more people to get involved in exercise or physical activity or sport. OK, topic 10.3 for question number two. Explain how four factors affect a person's ability to participate in physical activity as they get older. So four things that are going to affect you or your ability to participate in sport or physical activity as you age. OK, let's have a look. So facilities may lack lifts or disabled car parking spaces, which could restrict access for the elderly. A loss of strength in the elderly may prevent them from participating in high intensity or contact sports. So as we get older, we lose a lot of uh, our fitness, particularly strength and power, which may restrict us from certain activities like rugby. If people become parents or grandparents as they age, so as we grow up and we have children or grandparents, we may have less free time to participate as well. So that's another factor that could affect our ability to, to get involved in physical activity. And finally, there are fewer role models for the elderly. So most of our role models are in their prime, in their 20s or 30s, meaning older people may lack the inspiration uh, to participate. OK, so we'll have a quick look at the mark scheme again. And uh, I'll just pause this as we go down. Um, so discrimination was another one that we haven't mentioned. So age restriction. Some sports have restricted access and fewer opportunities for the elderly, such as contact rugby or weight training. So there might not be as many opportunities uh, as we get older. Education. Um, we get lots of opportunity when we're at school uh, to participate in physical activity. But once we leave school or university, these opportunities often dry up. Um, and there are other points there as well, so environment, family, we mentioned, uh, financial considerations. Older people, when they retire, they might be a little bit tight for money, so sports like golf might become too expensive to play. Uh, media coverage was another one, role models, time and work commitments. Uh, these change as we get older, so working affects our available time as well. So once we become uh, responsible for bringing in money for the household, so working, we're going to have less free time also. Um, and some other points you could have gone for there as well. So take, take your time, pause the video and have a look through the mark scheme to check your own answers. And we'll move on now to question number three. This one's also on topic 10.3. So suggest strategies to increase participation of people with a disability. 
So how can we get people with disabilities involved in sport or physical activity? We need to suggest four strategies. So not a huge amount of uh, explanation required here for four marks. What have I gone for? So facilities should have features such as wheelchair ramps, sliding doors and handrails that will allow more uh, disabled people to access facilities. And uh, number two, disabled parking spaces should be provided. Um, number three, establish sports clubs and provide activities such as wheelchair basketball. So setting up activities or sports clubs specifically for the disabled gives them more opportunities to get involved. And then finally, provide hoists that enable those with disabilities to enter and exit a swimming pool. So swimming pool hoists enable uh, people who are unable to use the ladder, for example, in a swimming pool to enter and exit. So that gives them access to swimming as, a, as another example there of a, a strategy to increase participation. So again, we'll have a look at the mark scheme. Lots of points we could have gone for. So access to the building, we mentioned that one. Have hearing loops, braille signs, good quality lighting or clear signage for people who are visually impaired or uh, have hearing problems. Welcoming guide dogs for the blind, uh, making sure changing rooms have wide doors, etc. Swimming pools have hoists. We mentioned that one. So again, just pause the video and check your answers against the mark scheme there sorry i just need to uh, let that one go down to the bottom so you can see those final points but we'll move on now to the next question on topic 10.4 so describe the advantages that sponsorship can provide for a performer so sponsorship now and we need to describe advantages of sponsorship for a performer so a sports performer and we need to make three points here as it's worth three marks so what have i gone for Sponsorship money enables performers to access high quality facilities and coaching. So that's the first advantage. Sponsorship brings in money and that money can be used to access really good quality facilities and coaching, which obviously benefits uh, performers, it helps them to improve and may also allow them to train and compete full time. So sponsorship money enables us to turn professional essentially, which means that we can um, concentrate on training and competing full time. We don't have to hold down a job as well, which would obviously restrict our ability to train and compete. And then sponsors may also provide equipment for athletes such as footwear, clothing, rackets or golf clubs. So many athletes are sponsored by companies that produce these things and they're given them for free. So we won't spend too much time on this one. It's a nice simple mark scheme. But again, take your time to, uh, to familiarize yourself with the points here. And we'll move on now to uh, topic 10.1 on the sports development pyramid. So the diagram shows a sports development pyramid. Name the three levels in the sports development pyramid labeled A, B and C for three marks. And this one, the command word is name. So you know by now, if you've watched my other videos on the previous chapters, that name, suggest or provide. Uh, these are really simple command words, no explanation required. So A, that's the performance level. We've got elite at the top, of course, then performance then participation for B and foundation for C. So a really simple mark scheme there as well. Let's move on. Back to topic 10.3 for the next question. And this is a really simple one uh, about interpreting some data. So the bar chart shows the percentage of young people in a region participating in regular physical activity outside of school each week by age and by gender. Identify using the bar chart the age group that has the highest percentage of males participating in regular physical activity. So which age group, in fact, let's uh, just give a, a bigger um, graph there. So which age group, is it 8 to 10, 11 to 13, or 14 to 16, which one contains the most males participating? And we look down at the key and males have got the solid uh, block there. So it's 8 to 10, where 70% of males are participating in that age range. And we'll just check the answer there and the mark scheme. OK, following on from our previous question, suggest reasons why there is a low percentage of participation for 14 to 16 year old females. So looking back at the graph, why is there such a low level of participation for females in this 14 to 16 um, age group? And we only need to suggest reasons here. So again, no uh, detailed explanations required and we need to make four points. So what have I gone for? There may be fewer opportunities for females to participate, first of all. So fewer opportunities for females than males, for example, a lack of sports teams, particularly in traditionally male sports like rugby and football. Uh, fewer female role models due to a lack of media coverage. So the majority of media coverage in sport is for males. 
Uh, so lack of inspiration and role models there for females. Some cultures prevent females from exposing their bodies, preventing them from accessing activities like swimming. So there's another factor that might have held back females in this age group. And they may also avoid activities that are considered too masculine, um, for example, rugby. OK, let's have a quick look at the mark scheme. So four marks there for the four points made. And uh, again, just pause this one as we go through to check your answers against the mark scheme. Uh, lots of other things we could have gone for, for example, uh, maybe influenced by peers, uh, puberty changes, so the starting of periods. They may be interested in schoolwork, education, or susceptible, sorry, susceptible to exam pressure. Um, and yeah, some other points that we could have talked about there, including discrimination at the bottom. But let's move on now to the next question on topic 10.1, so the sports development pyramid again. The sports development pyramid has four levels. Photograph A shows an introductory physical education lesson in basketball, so that's that one there. And photograph B shows a local club playing a competitive match. Identify, so a simple command word again, the level of the sports development pyramid shown in each photograph. So we'll start with A, and this is an introductory physical education lesson in basketball. So the key word here is introductory. Students are being introduced to basketball um, in a physical education lesson, and that means it must be the first stage of the pyramid, the foundation stage. And then photograph B is a local club playing a, playing a competitive match. So again, competitive is a key word here, and that suggests that it's the performance level and not the participation level, um, which is that second level in the pyramid. So let's move on, and another one on the same topic Describe characteristics of the following levels of the sports development pyramid and we'll start off with the elite level and this one's worth six marks which means we need to provide well, three descriptions of characteristics for each level. Okay, so elite. Performers compete at national or international level. We know that the elite level is the very highest level of uh, competition, so national or international competitions there for one mark. They're typically professional. So they're being paid for what they do in most cases, that's another mark, and have access to the highest quality coaching, equipment and facilities. I could have just put access to the highest quality coaching and still got a mark, but it's always a good idea to add additional detail if you can. Okay, so participation level for the next uh, three marks. Performers have chosen to participate in their leisure time, so they've made choices about which activities to participate in um, during their leisure time, that's one mark and they may attend extracurricular clubs. So that's a big feature of the participation level. It's taking um, the sport a little bit or a step further. You've been introduced to it during the foundation level. Now you're making choices, joining extracurricular clubs, um, and then they participate for enjoyment. Okay, so it's not too much about competition. That's the performance level and the elite level. They're much more about competition. Um, the participation level is about enjoyment. So there's three, three points made for each and three marks for each. And as I mentioned, I would have got an additional mark had one been available for mentioning access to the highest quality uh, equipment and facilities as well. So of course, there are many other points that we could have made, but I'll just pause it here briefly for the elite level. So have a look through those, compare it to the answers uh, that, you, that you came up with, and then for the participation level as well. Lots of different points. Um, these questions get asked a lot, so familiarize yourself with that mark scheme. Okay. Next question, topic 10.3 again, suggest two strategies. So suggest a nice simple question for two marks. Other than physical education levels, uh, sorry, lessons, that schools may use to increase participation in physical activity. So two things that schools could do to increase participation. Well, they can establish links with local sports clubs or leisure centers, giving students the pathway to continue outside of school and they can provide extracurricular clubs after school themselves. Okay, um, Again, plenty of points that we could have made, so really simple mark scheme. Um, I don't think we need to go through this one in too much detail, so pause the video if you need to compare your answers against those points. But we'll move on now to the next question, which is to suggest two advantages for performers of high levels of television coverage in sport. So we already had a question like this for sponsorship, but now two advantages of television coverage, so the influence of the media. So two marks for suggesting two advantages or benefits. So performers gain public exposure and fame, okay? And it increases their chances of receiving sponsorship because if they're being seen on TV, um, they're much more likely to be noticed and receive sponsorship. 
which can have lots of benefits, as we discussed in one of the previous questions. So what, could, what else could we have gone for? It increases chance of sponsorship, we mentioned. It increases public awareness of the individual and fame. That's the other point that we went for. It increases awareness of national selectors, so people selecting performers for national squads. Um, they can be seen, or sorry, performers can be seen through the media, and that gives them a, a better chance to be selected. It motivates them to play well, particularly if millions of people are watching at home, big events like the Olympics, and it provides the opportunity to analyse opponents' tactics by watching games of opposition teams and to analyse their own performances by looking at replays of, uh, of, their, of their own performance. Okay, so let's move on. Suggest two disadvantages now for the audience or spectators of increased te television coverage. So, so the impact of the media isn't all positive. There are some disadvantages, and this, this time we're looking at disadvantages for the audience or the spectators, and we need to suggest two. So media companies may influence the timings of events, which could be inconvenient for spectators. So there's a big demand to show games at prime time in the evening, for example, which is why so many games, matches are, are played late in the evening which isn't great for spectators who want to watch the events live often. And a rise in pay-per-view channels makes some events expensive to watch. So that's another negative for the spectators. And uh, take a look through the mark scheme. There's plenty of points you could have gone for here. Um, pause the video if you need to compare your answers to, uh, to the points made. Uh, but we'll move on now to topic 10.6. Suggest, so again, another easy command word here, two advantages for the host nation of a global event being shown on television. So the host nation of a global event like the Olympics or a World Cup, what are the advantages to the host nation? Okay, two points for two marks. The host nation gains exposure on an international stage. So with all the people watching that event, the Olympics uh, recently held in Japan, for example, the country gets lots of exposure. And this could lead to an increase in tourism and therefore revenue and employment. So if people get interested in the country, from watching them on TV, they might go and visit, and that brings in revenue or money, and therefore employment for the local people as well. Lots of opportunities to uh, set up businesses and uh, gain jobs, etc., gain employment. Okay, so it promotes the country. More people see aspects of the country and visit the country, so we've got increases in tourism, increases in trade, so that's similar to the revenue point I made here. Improves the quality of television coverage or increases technology in the country creates pride in the country or a feeling of well-being, increases participation in the sport being shown. So lots of people might want to get involved in the sport if it's shown um, in a big way on television or through the media. So many different points we could have made there again. Okay, next question. This one's on topic 10.7, technology and sport. So complete the table to show different positive and negative effects of technology on each group involved in sport. So our groups are the officials, so referees or umpires, the audience and spectators and the sport or event itself. So a positive effect of technology on the officials, this one should be quite simple to answer because we've got review systems like Hawkeye or VAR in football and these help officials to make correct decisions. So that's a benefit for them. But we've got a negative effect now on the audience. So more people may choose to watch from home, affecting the atmosphere at live events. The technology um, of TV and media means that not so many people choose to go to watch the live events and that could affect the atmosphere for those that do. And then the sport or event, the traditional nature of the sport might be affected. So the introduction of things like Hawkeye in tennis changed the traditional nature of the sport. So these reviews and challenges might affect the flow of the game and the, and the traditional feel of the game as well. So there's the mark scheme for you. You can take a look through. We've covered a lot of the main points there, but there are plenty of others you could have gone for. But that was the last question for uh, this session on Chapter 10, Social, Cultural and Ethical Influences. Like and subscribe if you enjoy this video and leave a comment down below if you have any suggestions for how these videos could be improved. As always, I hope you found this lesson useful and I'll see you next time for a breakdown of questions on Chapter 11, Ethics and Other Issues.